and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, let's talk some boxing. Shout out to the Lord Most High. Glory be to God. I'm going to my bed in a minute. First, I want to make this video because I was watching Boxing Ego. And Boxing Ego made a very good point about Mayweather versus Berto. You know, Dan Raphael or Dan Rayfield, whatever his name is, from ESPN News, he was talking about how Mayweather versus Berto was a mismatch, but yet he endorses Pacquiao versus Jeff Horn, saying that because it's in Australia, you know, it's allowed. Um, I think that's ridiculous. I think that, first of all, Mayweather versus Berto, I don't think that because it was a mismatch, we all knew it was going to be a mismatch, but I don't think that that really had anything much to do with anything. Uh, they're talking about the pay-per-view numbers were low and terrible pay-per-view numbers. Well, if you're talking about in terms of Mayweather's recent numbers, 400,000 pay-per-view buys was low, yeah. But if you're talking about it in terms of, you know, that he, you know, Mayweather versus Berto was low, generally speaking, no, it wasn't. And we can easily show you this. Now, it's obviously less than a tenth of what he made against Pacquiao. But I don't think that Mayweather versus Berto numbers were low. Because if Dan Ray feels saying that those numbers were low, then it means that Manny Pacquiao, when he fought Timothy Bradley after the Mayweather bout, so this is Mayweather versus Pacquiao, and this is Timothy Bradley, he also made 400,000 pay-per-view numbers. Okay? Were those numbers low? No. 400,000 pay-per-view buys is a sizable amount of money. Okay? Uh, when he did it against Timothy Bradley, he made 24 million. When Mayweather did it against Berto, there he made 28 million. Okay, so uh, obviously Mayweather versus Berto, the 400,000 uh, pay-per-view buys is not low. Now people were saying that after the Mayweather versus Pacquiao bout, that that was such a stinker that it affected pay-per-view, and it's affected pay-per-view since. If that was the case. Then that same year, November 21st, 2015, uh, Cotto versus Alvarez should have made low pay-per-view buys just like Mayweather and Pacquiao did after the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight. And that was not the case. They made almost a million pay-per-view buys, which is as good as you can get with two pay-per-view stars like Cotto and Alvarez. Okay, uh, Mayweather versus Cotto made 1.5 million pay-per-view buys okay and with Canelo it was 2.2 okay so I'm just saying if that was the case then Cotto versus Alvarez should have been lower okay but it wasn't and if that's not all Canelo then afterwards faced Amir Khan he made 600,000 pay-per-view buys so how's he making that kind of pay-per-view against it's a mismatch fight and it, it, no name though and He's still making all that money. In fact, that's the third highest amount of pay-per-view buys he's ever made in any fight. Canelo. Canelo averaged like 350, 325 pay-per-view buys, as you can see here. All right. So he goes back down to 300,000 uh, pay-per-view buys against Callum Smith, who's, you know, nobody really knows him that well. The point is, anyway, these pay-per-view buys are from HBO, which means they're about 55 $65 to pay for the pay-per-view and they sold okay when we look at Gennady Golovkin however he's not a pay-per-view star you know when Mayweather wasn't the pay-per-view star when Pacquiao wasn't a pay-per-view star when Cotto wasn't a pay-per-view star guess what kind of pay-per-view buys they were getting Cotto was 60,000 pay-per-view buys his first pay-per-view against Malinaji Pauli Malinaji so psh, I mean Gennady Golovkin did a little bit better than Cotto in his first pay-per-view okay and his second pay-per-view against Brooke for Sky Sports, where you pay like 35 to 25 US for the pay-per-view. So it's much the, the, the pay-per-view cost is significantly lower than you know 55 to 65 dollars. So because of that low costing pay-per-view, uh, you got more pay-per-view buys here for Golovkin versus Brooke. And I think this mostly happened because of Brooke. He brought in the pay-per-view numbers there. You know, Brooke is not a pay-per-view star. Now, let's put this whole thing in context. When you look at Oscar De La Hoya, you look at Bernard Hopkins, 
you look at Roy Jones Jr., and you look at their pay-per-views, these guys don't make 400 pay-per-views. In fact, 400 pay-per-views for these guys is high. You know, Roy Jones Jr., big pound for pound king and all of that. In his heavyweight championship fight against John Ruiz, okay, it was a mega event in 2003, only made 602,000 pay-per-view buys. That's it. That's his highest pay-per-view he's ever made. Okay? In his last fight against Hopkins, he made 150,000 pay-per-view buys. It's very, very low. That's like Golovkin numbers, right? My point, anyway, is this. That when you look at the old-time guys, Bernard Hopkins, his highest pay-per-view was against Oscar De La Hoya, which is a million pay-per-view buys. Okay? The end of his career, same thing, 150,000 pay-per-view buys. Okay? Like... Canelo numbers in terms of pay-per-view, 330,000 pay-per-views is his average, okay? Big fight against Felix Trinidad, how can, all, can, all he can make, he had a dance partner, 475,000 pay-per-view buys, okay? I think you get the idea. Oscar De La Hoya was the guy that changed the game, and he only changed it later on in his career. The big pay-per-view buys he made in his career were against Perno Whitaker, as you can see there, against Felix Trinidad, against... Fernando Vargas against Shane Mosley in his second fight against Shane Mosley against Bernard Hopkins uh, Ricardo Mayorga Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao okay but he he made low numbers like against Riviera 240,000 pay-per-view buys okay he averaged like somewhere around 300 to 400 pay-per-view buys okay just saying. And he was a big superstar. So when people say that Floyd Mayweather number, Jr.'s pay-per-view numbers were miserably low, it was a failure, it was a flop, <laughs> that's just negative publicity, man. You know, it's just negative publicity. Because Pacquiao hasn't been doing high pay-per-view numbers either. And it has nothing to do with Mayweather Pacquiao being a stinker. It is that these guys had high pay-per-view numbers because people were itching to see them fight one another. And so, while that was building up, people were watching their pay-per-view fights. But once they clashed and people saw that, they were no longer driven to watch their pay-per-view fights anymore. So, they're not watching their pay-per-view fights anymore. Pacquiao was basically writing Floyd's coattails, and by Aram drawing it out and using Mayweather's name, they were able to generate much more business. And so at the end of the day, Pacquiao earns it all in his pay-per-view, or at least has fights which generate $1.2 billion in revenue. And Mayweather has fights that generate $1.3 billion in revenue. Okay, and Mayweather's had less fights than Manny Pacquiao in terms of pay-per-view. You know? So you have to understand that the truth of the matter is not that Mayweather versus Berto was a flop or anything like that. In terms of Mayweather numbers, it's low, uh, at least post De La Hoya, okay? Before De La Hoya, it's high, but post De La Hoya, it's low. However, it's not flop or anything like that. And when you look at Manny Pacquiao's numbers, his numbers also are not necessarily a flop, but again, Post De La Hoya, they're low, okay? Uh, when he fought Chris Elgier, it was 400,000. He fought Bradley the third time, 400,000. Vargas, 300,000, right? But before De La Hoya, these numbers are actually comparable to what he was making. See? So, it's really up to the the reader to read between the lines of the biasness and the hypocrisy out there and I'm glad that Boxing Ego highlighted that and I'm just bringing up facts and figures so people can look at it and now be able to make some sense of it you guys are real